Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with RSU TV at Roger State University in Oklahoma. Today we are chatting with Brandon Caruso, president of the board of the Indian Healthcare Resource Center. Brandon has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. But thank you, Brandon, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So health is so important. If we're not healthy, then nothing else works. Talk about the the work of the of the Healthcare Resource uh, Center for the tribal communities and what does it mean to provide culturally appropriate care in this context? Sure, yeah, it's, it's tremendously important. I'm glad you asked that question. It's, a, it's an important question to ask. Uh, as far as what's culturally appropriate, we are able to dissect and meet those, those expectations, those extra handle of care, because a, a lot of folks don't know our, our community uh, has one of the highest levels and, and needs of, of care. And so when we come in, the, uh, the average person has something like eight to 11 different diagnoses. And we've, we've just been able to establish a, um, a way to, to properly diagnose in a culturally sensitive uh, environment. It's, it's really important for, for people to understand the great diversity, even within this, this particular region, of different peoples, different traditions, uh, where people are coming from as well. In 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 um, when when people walk into the door, they're not all coming from the same place. So you have uh, 29 different federally recognized tribes here in Oklahoma. Uh, of those, any of the not just the tribes here in Oklahoma, but tribes all around the country. Uh, if you're a citizen, if you've got that tribal card, you can come to the uh, Indian Healthcare Resource Center. Uh, you can obtain services uh, here, and and what what we see is we serve the majority of the the metro greater Tulsa area. Uh, we see mostly Cherokee Nation citizens. I myself am a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, uh, but we also see uh, Choctaw citizens, uh, Muscogee Creek Nation citizens, Osage, and and so on. Uh, where the uh, facility is located is is. Uh, at an intersection between the Muscogee Creek Nation, the Osage Nation, as well as the Cherokee, uh, Cherokee Nation. So we're, we're right in the middle of, of it, and so we, we serve those communities um, mostly. But uh, we have folks coming all the way from Oklahoma City, which is 90 miles away, just to, um, just to come for our services. So there is an accumulation very often of, of need, which is not necessarily introduced right. when the person first walks into the door. So talk about that sort of intake process and what you've observed as a board member and how, you're, how your staff has informed you about that process and how people actually walk into the door and how the staff needs to respond in a way that might be different than, than other places. And that's a, that's a good question. I, I think they, they, they see it as that because the reality is you're, you're dealing with somebody that probably doesn't have health insurance, although if, if you do have health insurance, you're, you're more, more than welcome to, to come and utilize that as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> my primary uh, physician is, is there with the center, uh, and I, I have health insurance myself. Um, but but what, is, what is different is I would say the, the needs uh, for being culturally sensitive, knowing that these folks um, may not have a, a history of, of uh, trust built with other uh, either Indian health uh, facilities like IHS or just your, your private insurance, or, or maybe they just don't have access, so the, the expectation is not there. They might be a little intimidated about the environment. Sure, sure. That goes to say, too, with the, the stigmatism of what, what you would expect from an uh, Indian health center that could be, um, you know, uh, low expectations. Whereas I, I think that uh, the Indian Healthcare Resource Center here in Tulsa has has largely ex uh, exceeded those those expectations of of what you would normally uh, see, uh, such as long wait times or, or a low quality uh, care of service. Where, whereas the services that are are there not not just expand what what's inside those those four walls, but um, we, we see services outside through um, works through a, a running club, a, a yoga club, a family fun and fitness day that happens and, and fundraisers and uh, of course culturally activities too. You have uh, a stickball. We have a yearly powwow for example. So we do try to meet those needs as well and uh, the reality is a lot of these uh, kids and families just may not have ever seen or, or been in, in attendance to 
uh, a powwow, even though it's you know within their own culture. So you're, we're also providing those as well. You're trying to create a healing environment where people can be relaxed in interacting with your staff, with interacting with the, with the uh, resource center and interacting with each other so that then healing can take place. Mm -hmm. And if you can create in that environment community connection through a powwow, okay. uh, through attendance, through, through connection to a uh, community and heritage um, that, that is life enhancing, you're actually also healing the community. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. I, I'm glad you touched on that. We, we do believe very strongly that caring in itself is a strong medicine. So as a community, if, if we care for our, our people with, with regards to making sure they're, they're eating right, nutrition, uh, uh, proper parenting or, or future parent practices, those, those kinds of things where, where we're not just tackling their, their primary, their internal medicine and, and their, their uh, prescriptions, which by the way, we, we handle over a thousand prescriptions a day at our pharmacy. Uh, but we're also uh, seeing, seeing needs in, in a cultural respect too. So you're, you're absolutely right. Um, caring, I think, is, is at the heart of that. And so we're, we're trying to uh, make sure that, that we have a, a healthier community. through A more cohesive community, tribal cohesion as well. Yeah. Adhesion and cohesion within the tribe. Right, right. And, and furthermore, I, I can ask, um, or I, I can tell you that the, uh, the American Indian Chamber of Commerce here in Oklahoma was, was birthed out of a grant through the, American, uh, through the Indian Healthcare Resource Center of Tulsa. So, so now we're not just meeting the community's needs on a health level, but also uh, we are helping small businesses grow and, and network with, uh, with larger tribes and, and seeing that grow on a, on a commerce level as well. So as a board member, you have a very unique uh, position. You're, you're, you're kind of an outsider. You're kind of an insider. You sure. have a little bit of a, you have a governance and oversight responsibility, fiduciary responsibility. And you're also looking at how Carmelita shapes her staff and, and mm -hmm. shapes these services. Talk a little bit about the competencies that mm -hmm. are required to provide uh, health care. And we're, we're talking not only physical health, we're talking about mental health right. care as well. So talk a little bit about how you see this as a board member from your perch, walking into the door, you'll you'll immediately recognize it as a is a well operated uh, workplace, and uh, we see through um, not just a happy staff and and, and folks that are uh, that we retain, but uh, we you know we see it through recognition like our, our local awards that uh, that I see uh, almost seems like every every time you know every year it seems like we're we're getting some award for for our quality of uh, care and service. Um, but working with, with Carmelita and the board, you know, they've been doing it for a long time. It's uh, 1976 is when the doors opened. Uh, Carmelita's been CEO for 30 years. Um, it is, is truly been a uh, honor and you know, I can only sit back and, and try to suck in as much, you know, uh, knowledge and, and experience as I can with my time there because it, it, it is something that uh, is, is quite phenomenal to see. It's also important to understand that, that the intentionality is, is important, mm -hmm. but you also have a workflow. It has to be organized. You have services to provide, and these are medical services, so, you're, so not making mistakes and keeping data um, uh, you know, appropriately uh, right. organized and, and honoring the patient, but also finding out what kind of treatment needs to be provided. You mm -hmm. talked about over a thousand prescriptions uh, being That's written. Right. Yeah. That requires a high degree of business management. Your budget is about $20 million? So 1.6 in federal slash state funding. Mm -hmm. uh, all in all, we see about 1.8 and the, uh, the remaining comes from fundraisers uh, like, for example, uh, once a year we have a Dance of Two Moons, and that's our, our big fundraiser and auction event that we put on in March, uh, as well as uh, smaller fundraisers that happen throughout the year. One is a uh, diabetes prevention uh, fundraiser that happens. But, but these fundraisers, I mean, they directly impact our, our programs, such as uh, summer camp or, or these youth programs, like um, uh, nu proper nutrition um, education. So with, with limited budgeting, 
we are able to accomplish a lot, and and that is uh, a a um, direct correlation to the uh, the high level of, of management that happens there. How many people are served annually? Two thousand patients that we have, and over eleven thousand visits that happen each year. So, for over eleven thousand visits, you have two thousand patients being served at any one time. And 11, 000, over 11,000 visits, patient visits that, that happen per year. And what is the future of the organization? Is it going to expand? Is it going to provide mm -hmm. additional services over the next years? It is, yeah, and I, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I didn't want to forget about that. We are currently expanding both of our, our services, uh, primarily focusing our youth services, which is really exciting for me. I, I worked at a summer camp uh, coming out of college when I was 18, so I, I see uh, the need for it, the hunger for these kids that want to get it out there. And a lot of them, like I mentioned, they might not have experienced a game like stickball, which, which is a, a Cherokee Muscogee Creek game, um, or, or, or even a powwow. Now, you have a number of different programs, including uh, programs for primary care, internal medicine, pediatrics, uh, optometry, mm -hmm. dentistry. You have, of course, your pharmacy, which you've referenced. Um, you have uh, radiology, ultrasound, mammography. Um, you also have behavioral health, suicide pre prevention, uh, drug addiction, mental, uh, domestic violence uh, counseling. Uh, talk about that sort of balance between physical health mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, psychological health and, and uh, mental health. Statistically, we have a very high statistic of, of issues with, with alcoholism, suicide, um, the st statistically, as a Native American, you know, I, we are less likely to uh, have a college education, own a home. We come from a, a history of, of renters, people that um, are family members that maybe just don't have the financial wherewithal to pass that along. And you also replace awkwardness with pride. Sure. Right? A, a, ignorance with knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, sadness with joy, right? It, it, you're, you're, you, it's, it's really a healing kind of, a, kind of an act yeah. to have this center, to, to bring people together, to provide the treatment that is necessary in a culturally appropriate way, but then also to build community in different ways. Brown and Caruso, thank you so much for really, sharing the you. work of the Indian Healthcare Resource Center. Your work as the president of the board and the work of this great staff, and thank you so much. Thank you for your insights. Thank you for your time, I appreciate it, anytime.